Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Boss Talks. I'm Christine Drummond. I'm here with my awesome co-host, Joel Lord. We need to take it up a notch today because we are talking enthusiasm. That is lesson number six from The Law of Success by Napoleon Hill, a book that we've been um, spending a little bit of time on because we feel like it's so important, these 15 laws of success to share with you guys, to share with the listeners out there. But there's a price. There's a price to this information. Then the price is free. But what we do ask is that you share it. If you love the value that you're getting from these podcasts, please help us out. Share this information. We're not getting any monetary benefit from this at all. We are. This is a passion project. We pour so much uh, money into our own personal development that we want to save others thousands and thousands of dollars by just regurgitating this information in a way that makes sense to us, but hopefully resonates with you. So today's topic is all about enthusiasm. I just want to read the first couple of sentences from this chapter just to give you um, the foundation for what we're going to be talking about um, throughout the chapter. So basically, he says enthusiasm is a state of mind that inspires and arouses one to put action into the task at hand. It does more than this. It is contagious and vitally affects not only the the enthusiast, but all with whom he comes in contact. Now, have you ever had that person that is so enthusiastic, it's infectious, they're just vibing on a different stratosphere and you are just captivated by their enthusiasm? We all know those people, right? So, how can you apply that to yourself? And it doesn't mean you need to be the loudest person in the room. I wanna, I wanna be very clear about that. You can still show up with enthusiasm and be the quietest person in the room. So don't, don't get it mixed up with loudness and confidence. It's just about going about your work, your, your passion project, whatever you're doing with enthusiasm, you know? And what he says in here is that enthusiasm bears the same relationship to a human being that steam does to the locomotive. Just let that sink in for a little bit. It is the vital moving force that impels action. The greatest leaders of men are those who know how to inspire enthusiasm in their followers. So this is the key. This is about um, you know being that leader that can inspire action through enthusiasm in the people that follow you, your team, your employees, your family, anyone that looks up to you, you can become that person that inspires them into action. And enthusiasm is the most important factor entering into salesmanship. So if you have a business, you don't want to be rocking up with low tone and low energy, trying to be enthusiastic about something, um you know it just makes it totally it makes it totally different like you're going to have a different experience less results if you show up like that so enthusiasm it energizes your body so that you can get along with less than half the usual amount of sleep and at the same time it will enable you to perform from two to three times as much work as you usually perform in a given period without fatigue now joel i am proof of this this first week of the year let me tell you um launching two businesses this year and i've been on two five hour conferences in the last two mornings it's required you know a 4 30 get up um i'm part of the 5 a.m club anyway but you know late nights trying to get the businesses um off the ground less sleep but because i'm so passionate about what i do and i'm so enthusiastic about serving people and making sure people have an incredible experience I'm getting so much more done, guys. I'm so much more productive. I'm clearer. I'm more focused. And everything's just boom, boom, boom. There's so much momentum happening right now. I'm not being externally influenced at all because I'm so focused and enthralled in what I need to achieve. So, Joel, I want to bring you in here because I know that um, (laughs) you, you love the topic of enthusiasm. Well, you love me talking about the topic of enthusiasm. We've spoken about it in our mastermind group. But what do you want to say around um, this topic? Well, you've like if the listeners want to like hear word for word exactly what it's going to take, the cost of entry into the mythical realm of 
success in entrepreneurialism, you need to just go back and listen to what Christine just said in the last like three minutes. It, like she shared how, like Christine, you shared how, you know, like late nights, early mornings and, you know, getting up, showing up and still having like, like a zest for it. Like you, you like I'm reading here, like, uh, from some of the notes I took from the book was like, I must have my heart bursting with enthusiasm about what I do because, you know, if you're not enthusiastic about what it is that you're doing, how the hell are you going to get anyone else to be enthusiastic about it? And enthusiasm brings out emotions and it's emotions that move people towards your product and your service and bettering themselves. Like if, if there's no emotion involved, you know, like there's people just stay in their comfort zone. Like think about the last time you bought something right before you made a logical reason why you should buy it. You know, uh, you were emotional. The, the marketing made you emotional. So, you know, like be, be that person, a character, be that person that, you know, can, can show enthusiasm. And like one of the reasons I, uh, you know, love doing this podcast with Christine and, you know, doing, events with Christine is because she's so enthusiastic and it is Christine. You are that infectious person that raises the vibe in the room. And, you know, I might be the logical one. You're the, you know, like I bring the logic. So, you know, like that, that's, that's just how it is. So I was only talking to a, a client of mine yesterday about this and like, so, like I, I, I'm pretty blunt. Sometimes I, I was speaking and I was like, we're talking about the success in the business world and I'm like fired up. Like if anyone has ever sat down for a five minute conversation with me about business and, and building a business, like it could turn into like eight hours and I will not shut the hell up. <laughs> and I will like, I'm just pumped. I'm like, I get excited. I'm like, let's go. Let's just let's pull the trigger. Let's do it. And like, I'm, I'm, you know, super, 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 high vibe about that stuff. So that, that's my thing. Like, I guess when it comes to enthusiasm, Christine, like the listeners need to find that because my client wasn't vibing high about it. So to me, like that just sends up red flags. I'm like, are you actually excited to do this? And like, it's kind of like, well, tell your face because it doesn't know yet. You know, you're you're not, you're speaking in that monotone level. You're, You're not, you're not pumped. You're not, you're not, you're not pumped, excited to get out there. Like, and, and what it was is because this person was new to business. They hadn't attached it to anything that uh, they'd experienced before. Like I'd experienced like the competition of business and the winning and the, you know, and the, it's, it's amazing to me. But the thing is this person had done really well at tennis. And so after a, checking in and finding all these different things that, uh, you know, they weren't really excited about. I was like, have you ever been excited about any, you've been enthusiastic? No. And they say, no, no, no. And then I linked sport to it, which we've spoken about many, many times. And when I said, Oh, can you remember the time when you just really cracked that ball down the, down the line playing tennis? Like have you, you, you smack that forehand and it goes so fast. It knocks the racket out of the person's hand. They can't get to it. And, you know, they're sweating, they can't get, they're just bugging, you're just all over it and you're just, you're punishing them. <laughs> you get that feeling and he's like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, well, that, that's how you got to feel like business. That's how I'm feeling right now. Like I'm feeling like I'm smacking one down the line talking about business. So you can see, like, if you're watching this on YouTube, which check our YouTube channel out if you haven't seen it already. And if you're hearing it, I, I know you can hear both Christine and I talking about what it is that we're, we're excited about and, and you can feel the enthusiasm and that that's infectious. And that is how people will see the vision before there's any reason for them or evidence to see that there's a vision, you know, like Christine got me onto watching undercover billionaire, like that guy in that episode, Christine, am I right? He's got no, he's got 500 bucks in his pocket. He's got all these people hanging, doing all this work for him, but, but because you can see he's infectious and excited and, you know, like he's got enthusiasm about and belief he's leading these people. And 
Like, I know at the end of the season, they will be glad they fired him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it, you know, and then I guess the other part is he that I noticed is when the chips were down and he felt like he's letting everyone down as a leader, he still showed up and he brought the enthusiasm, whether he, he, there's no way when he lost that, uh, that venue. (laughs) And if you're watching it, if you haven't watched it, guys watch it. I love entrepreneurialism shows, but like he, he, he thought something was in the bag. It wasn't, it could have just devastated the whole thing. But he called a meeting. He didn't run away. He called a meeting. He got everyone. He was still enthusiastic. He still gave everyone a kick up the backside and he promised that he wouldn't let them down. And he went away and, you know, sorted out not feeling that great because he really felt not great. But yeah, Christine, have you ever felt that and still had to show up? Like, Well, absolutely. Absolutely. And um Mate, I love that you brought up sport because so many of us have played sport that go into business for ourselves. Like we've got, it's that competitive nature um, within us that actually, you know, is such an incredible tool to tap into when you're in business. It, it, go back to when you were playing in that grand final. Go back to when you were, you know, on that winning streak with your team. You know, go back and remember those feelings, attach that emotion and then go, how... Like, what are the lessons? What are the skills? What are the traits and characteristics I had to embody during that game, that match? Um, and what can I transfer across into my business life? How can I bring that same sort of enthusiasm and hunger and desire into what it is I want to create? Now, Joel and I, we are very big, uh, we're impact driven. That's why we do this podcast for free. We want to make an impact. We want to know at the end of our life that we mattered. That's why we do this. We're, we're le- here to leave a legacy. We're not here to play small. We're here to, um, to serve people at, at the highest level that we can. That's why we show up no matter what. We fit this podcast in our diaries. We've, we've done this podcast in America in a hotel room. <laughs> do you remember that, Joel? Like, we just made it work. Wherever we are in the world, we make it work because we're enthusiastic about the impact we can create by the words that we use that filter through your ears into your brain that challenge your thought process. And that's why we have so many listeners. That's why I, I really believe our listeners uh, it is increasing. Our reach is increasing because people want to hear the truth. They want to hear the real stuff. They don't want to hear the BS anymore. People are sick of the BS. So with enthusiasm, because I've got a little bit off track there, but with enthusiasm, I want you to know that it's not merely like a figure of speech, which is what he says in the book here. It's a vital force that you can harness and use with profit. Without it, it would resemble an electric battery without electricity. And it's so true. And he says that enthusiasm is a vital force with which you recharge your body and develop a, di- develop a dynamic personality. Like who would love to have a dynamic personality? Who looks at other people and goes, shit, I wish I had that trait or that characteristic. Um, I wish I could embody that. Well, guess what? It's already within you. You can't see something in someone else that you haven't already seen in yourself. So you already have the enthusiasm, the passion, the drive, the hunger that we show up with every day on this podcast, right? So happiness, we spoke about emotions, but happiness lies always in the future and never in the past. The happy person is the one who dreams of heights of achievement that are yet unattained. So what he's saying there is you, you can't you can't be happy by living in the past, guys. If you're looking back and comparing yourself to results that you haven't achieved or missed goals or missed opportunities or mistakes or failures, like I've had so many. And if I sat there and dwelled, there's no way I would move at all. Like I'd be in paralysis. But what you have to do is wipe the slate clean. Don't wait for a flipping Monday. Don't wait for a new year or the start of a week. Start today. Start with your enthusiasm. What is one thing in your life that you can get so enthusiastic about? It doesn't even have to be your job right now. Some of you hate your job and that's okay as long as you have an exit strategy. Please don't stay in a job that you hate um, longer than you need to. Please Go and do something that sets your soul on fire, that lights you up, that you can talk about passionately. If you're a stay-at-home mum and you don't have a job, then be the best stay-at-home mum. What can get you enthusiastic about it? It's about flipping um, flipping those thoughts. And, you know, I don't like um, putting the washing away. It's my most hated chore out of all of them. 
I don't care if I have to pick up dog poo. We're house sitting, um, dog sitting at the moment. So that's what we have to kind of do. I love mowing lawns. I love doing the washing, the washing up, but putting the clothes away, it's my most hated thing. But that's because I kept telling myself it's the most hated thing. But when you flip it with enthusiasm and you turn it into a game, I wonder how quickly I'm going to give myself 45 seconds to see if I can get these. <laughs> like I literally time myself. I turn it into a game and I do it with the kids. Let's all see, we've got the clothes out on the table. Let's all see who can put theirs away the fastest and we make it fun. That is the shortcut to enthusiasm is bring the fun back. And Joel, this is what happens when we hang out. I remember when we went to Melbourne, do you remember that? <laughs> and we, we, were, we were consciously, intentionally and intellectually trying to think of ways to have some fun. So we went down to Bright, didn't we? We were doing handstands. We were doing crazy poses. I had Joel doing stuff that if he was on his own, he just would not be doing. <laughs> but that's what it's about. It's like surrounding yourself with people. And Joel keeps me grounded. He is the logical one. And, um, but he's, that's what I love about him is that he's always, always up for anything to a degree, I guess. <laughs> but um, Joel, you've had so much success um, in your life and I and you know you you've shared your story on so many occasions um, you know when you went from that job of you know working at the tip where there probably wasn't a lot of enthusiasm going on there but what you did was you showed up every day with the intention that that was not where you were staying that was not going to be the end of your story so can you shed some light on how you had to show up in that moment and then what shifted, I guess, that led you down the, the path that you chose? Well, like, I just knew that. I just took a look at the people that were at the, like, at the job there. You know, I was working for the council and it was like, it was good money. It was like enough to get those golden handcuffs on where you're making so much money for doing not that much work, to be honest. And I was looking at these people and I was like, if I don't do something soon, I'm going to blink my eyes and I'm going to be here for 40 years. Like some of the people that were there, like that is there, they're lifers. And, you know, they're, they're battling just to keep the next contract and the next contract where they get to, because you've got to renew your contracts with the, with the council. And I was just like, you know what? Like I felt, because at that time I was basically financially close to zero. I was in, I was in the negatives. But um, I was working on it and I was like, well, I, um, <laughs> like I'm at zero. I just might as well roll the dice. Like, cause what are you going to roll it on? Like you got nothing to lose, you know? And, you know, it just really, I had a really great coach and he would bring up things to me. Like um, I, I've got it up on the computer here, Bronnie Ware, like the five regrets of the dying. You know, I wished I'd allowed myself to be happier. I, you know, I wished I'd had the courage to, uh, do the things in my life that I wanted to do, not what others expected of me, you know, really pushed me when I was telling a story that was going to keep me in my comfort zone. So like, I, I guess I, I guess the truth is like, I got help from someone who'd done it before me, who'd, who'd been in the dark place and not been happy and everything like that. And, you know, I just, that's what I did. And I, what I like the, the strategy that I used was like, right, well, I'm here now. Every day I'm here is a day um, closer to the day I'm not going to be here. I'm going to do the job so well that I'm basically, they're never going to fire me and I can get away with more stuff like being on my phone when I'm not allowed to be on my phone at the place. And I literally build a business walking around on bloody crates and I organized a, a deal like, first of all, I organized that I was going to go to Tony Robbins business mastery and I'd hand my resignation in and I didn't have a business. I had no business. It was like idiotic. And I was like, I'm going to go find one. I'm going to, I'm going to believe that I can make this happen. And I'm not suggesting anyone followed my strategy there because that could have blown up in my face, but that's what I did. And I literally just, I literally just bet on myself. Like I didn't like all the things that I did, I didn't know how to do before I did them. I just thought, well, shit, I see all these other people building businesses and I see all these other people buying and selling properties and making a profit. And I see all these other people 
listening to the narrative that you can't do it. Well, I'm not going to be one of those people. I, I don't even know if I was actually good at what I was doing or not. And I just realized logically the only way I could find out is if I freaking just went and did it. Cause at least I'd know, at least you'd die knowing that, wow, I swung the bat and wow, I struck out. <laughs> I got, <laughs> I got bowled clean, but at least I had a go. At least you're not going to be one of those people that goes, I could have been, I should have been, I wished I'd done it. So I guess when I did it and I pulled the trigger, I just bet so hard on myself and I needed enthusiasm to show up because I drew enthusiasm from my kids watching me from the pain that I was going to receive. If I didn't bloody pull this off, that was, that helped me become enthusiastic. I was like, wow, I need to show up and make this happen. I need to get in. And I did it with supermarkets. I had to get into that community and get the community to back me because I certainly had Coles and Woolworths trucks driving around the town. I wasn't going to get new people moving in. So I had to go around and literally make them fall in love with us. And they did. And they, they supported us. Thank goodness. And yeah, but that, that's my story. And that's literally what you got to do. You got to like, I guess, back yourself and find a way to believe in yourself. And if you don't believe in yourself yet, do what I did, go around and meet people that can see who you really are before you can see it in yourself. Like, like the amount of times different people have said to me, and I'm saying it to you, the listener now, one day you will see in yourself what other people see in you. And that's the day you become truly powerful because picking up on something you said before, Christine, like people wanting to be someone else. Oh my goodness. I, I'm like, I love reading and uh, a philosopher uh, had that said to him, this guy felt he had no redeeming qualities and everything like that. And he wished he was someone else. Well, people that wish they were someone else lack the courage to let themselves be happy. So it's not that your life's so bad. You just need to work on your courage. What if you worked on your courage and you just had the courage to just go, listen, this is, this is who I am now, not where I'm going. This is the situation I'm in right now. And I have the power to change it. And and go from there. And this is, this is the cards I'm dealt. This is the, this is the location I'm starting and let's go out there and be the person that does the work that will get the results. Like, like what we do every day, Christine, we do the be, do have, don't we? Like we are not where we want to be yet. Like Christine is not like, hasn't got the successful businesses that she started like this year. She, they're not where they want to be, but she's already acting like she is there by doing the work. And that's why you can go all the way back to the start and listen to how you will become successful in business and how you will, you will change it all. So long winded Christine, but I that's it. it. Like get, get the definite chief aim, get what you want and yeah. get enthusiastic about it. That is literally the simple mic drop, put it on your wall, get, get your definite chief aim and then get enthusiastic about it. Like, you, you did a vision board, right, Christine? Like a, a vision board uh, a program recently and you had a ton of people come on. How many of them right now, a week or so later, are waking up every day feeling really enthusiastic about everything that's on that board? Hmm. I know I am. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, you know, and like, and I'm not judging because I've got a vision board too. And I, until I read this book, like I've got it written here, like get, become um, enthusiastic about everything on my vision board. It's what Andy Frasilla does every day for the last 19 years. He has looked at his vision board for 10 minutes, no less than 10 minutes a day before he goes to bed, goes to sleep. And he gets, he visualizes, which is another form of getting enthusiastic about the Lamborghini, the private jet, the big business, you know, like he wants to have a bigger business than Nike. Well, he's visualizing that every day. He's at 500 mil a year now. So he's doing something right. That dude visualizes and he uses the law of attraction and he uses all that stuff, but he also couples it with that other thing called work. <laughs> and there's days that we don't believe in ourselves. Right. And there's days that he doesn't believe in himself and all the successful people have those days, uh, but they find a way to be, they, they find a path 
to become enthusiastic about what it is. They use the tools that they've learned to become enthusiastic and they just get out there and do it because it'll show up one day, right? Because don't you want to be an enthusiastic, happy person? Like, far out. <laughs> the only way to live. Um, I love that, you know, even when you were working at the tip, even though you didn't love it, you still showed up with enthusiasm because you, you knew what your get out card was. You knew there was something better coming, but you thought, you know what? I'm going to be so good at this job that I'm not going to give them any reason to fire me. So I know that this is secure, but I'm going to be working over here in the background on where my heart truly lies. And like, guys, take a lesson from that. Like you might be in a job that you absolutely loathe, but that doesn't mean you can't turn up every day with enthusiasm and do it to the best of your ability, knowing that it's not going to last forever. So I love that. And the other thing that you said, Joel, was, you know, about that, that comparison and that guy that didn't think he had any qualities and he wished he was somebody else. If you, if you're sitting there listening to this thinking, yeah, I, I felt like that. I wish I was, could speak like that person or be like that person. Then you're missing the magic of who you could truly be. You're missing the, the inner potential, the light that's within you. You're dimming your own light. So don't ever wish that you could be somebody else. And I heard this incredible story today from this man that is, uh, his name's Lance and he has cerebral palsy and he's, um, you know, he's in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Now, most people could see that as a barrier, could see it as a, an obstacle to success. Do you know what? He said, there's a real opportunity for me to inspire to empower, to make an impact to other people with disabilities. And I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it because he didn't have the clearest speech. He wasn't sitting up straight. He wasn't in a suit. He wasn't, you know, he, he wasn't like the perfect picture of health and everything. But what he was, was very certain on who he was and the service and the inspiration he could deliver. He knows that he has a voice and the world needs to hear it. And I'm here and Joel's here to tell you guys that you all have a voice. And some of you are probably listening to this going, but I don't have a story. Who wants to hear from little old me? I, I'm saying that and I'm talking to myself here because that was my thing. Who wants to hear from me? I don't have any value to add. And I want you to know that it's your story. It's your experiences that you've been through. It's your perspective that people want to hear, you know, and like we, we want to drown out the negative. So we need more people that are like you, that are open-minded, that are positive. We need more people like you to be the lighthouse, you know, that are, that are shining the light before the boats even arrive. So I hope that that kind of inspires you to go, you know what, Christine's right. I do have a voice and I do need to share. I need to get my message out to the world. Whatever that message is, whatever your zone of genius is, I hope that this podcast inspires you to go, you know what? Fuck it. I just, I'm sick. I'm, I'm sick and tired. Enough's enough. I don't want to be in the same situation I'm in five years down the track. Like now's the time to shift guys. If there was ever a time to pivot, it is now. Okay. Yes, there's a lot going on in the world, but who gives a shit? Don't be externally influenced. Be internally driven. If you don't focus your direction every day, if you don't show up with enthusiasm every day and passion about something in your life, the world is going to steal your focus. The world is here to beat you down. All you have to do is flick on the news. And within, I think I was on there for 10 seconds today. And I'm like, oh, I come away feeling so icky after I listen to the news. It is the greatest thief of confidence and joy that I think is out there. When are they going to start putting on the good news stories, the things that inspire us, the things that lift us up? Why are they trying to keep us playing small, keep us in fear, keep us from, you know, our true potential? Guys, start filtering the information that you're exposing yourself to. Start fueling yourself with things that are going to drive you, inspire you, put that fire in your belly. You know, if your thoughts and your actions and your words harmonize, did you know you are bound to influence those with whom you come in contact more or less towards the way of your thinking? And this is where that telepathy comes in. When your own mind is vibrating at a high rate, can you hear my voice vibrating at a high rate right now? And it's being stimulated with enthusiasm. And hopefully you can feel that. Hopefully it's oozing through your, your radio, your phone, whatever your listening device is. And with that vibration, it's registering in the minds 
of all within its radius. So hopefully this vibration, you guys are feeling that going, yeah, and getting fired up and pumped up. That's the power of enthusiasm, guys. And that's the power that you all have within you to go out there and influence change, to start a movement, to be a better person, to rally the troops, even if it's just your family, you know, to, to go out there and, and be your best self. So before I hand it back um, to you, Joel, there's something in here that I, I really highlighted. And it was about whatever you successfully sell to others, you must first sell to yourself. And I'm in contact on a daily basis with people who do not believe in the service they provide. They do not believe in the product that they provide. And they, they just don't believe in what they're selling. They don't believe in themselves. So guys, use your enthusiasm, your tone, your manner. It all makes a difference. If you show up at a higher frequency, I guarantee you will attract more good things into your life. It's just how the laws work, the universal laws. And I know, Joel, you are so onto the universal laws. I know you've been studying them for so long, but it's so true, isn't it? It's, it's all about that frequency, showing up with enthusiasm, energy. It's infectious. 100%. You know, like you, you got to find things that produce like the stimuli that will cause you to rise to, you know, superhuman heights. Like when you look at someone who's, who's done something amazing that you are so impressed with, it's because they've found a way to stack the deck to become so certain and to be willing to do the work with enthusiasm. Like they haven't just used enthusiasm. They've used everything we've said about everything in the chapters of this book so far. Like I highly recommend you read this book and I want to give you something practical, you know, like, you know, you can do this from some form of mastermind, like just even starting a book club where you get a really empowering book. It's li literally what Christine and I are involved in right now. Like I read this book and it told me that this would happen if I created a mastermind. So I created a mastermind about this book. And all we do is you read a chapter of the book every uh, fortnight and we show up and we, we give each other our insights. Now, We've got people that are like myself. There's people like Christine. There's highly successful uh, multi-million dollar coaches. There's people that are on the speaking circuit. There's people that are teachers. We're from all different countries. And we've got an 18 year old in there. We've got uh, stay at home mums, you know, like that. Like we've got, like we've had the courage to have people in there that might not think the same way as us. That is, and the more you can do that, <laughs> The, the more rich your life will be and you'll have, you'll be able to have more enthusiasm. So like as far as the person that wanted to be someone else, if that's you, like I, I actually had a client say that they wish that they were Russell Brunson. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, so ha like how old's Russell Brunson? And they said like he's 40 or something like that. I was like, okay, well this person's much, much younger than that. And I said, okay, cool. So would you be willing to give up, you know, 18, 20 years of your life to uh, be where he is now? Like skip forward. Like, and like, what about all the hardships he's had to go through? Would you like Russell Brunson's got a bazillion kids. Would you like to be dealing with a bazillion kids right now? Like, and all like, it hasn't all been rainbows and pony rides to Russell Brunson. He's definitely, uh, you know, and it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're talking about Tony Robbins, whether you're talking someone in your company that you admire, like they haven't broadcasted and some people say they do. And I don't know if they do. I don't think everyone broadcasts every chapter that's in their life book. You know, there's, there's chapters that people don't post on social media. You know, there's times because like for, for multiple different reasons, I'm not going to go into that, but like if you're feeling like you're someone, you want to be someone else, like that, how do you know, like how many, how many people would swap with you right now? For example, like if you're listening to this, I'm pretty sure you're not in like one of the African countries where there's still war, you know, that we don't hear about, you know, like, or in, you know, we're not worried about bombs dropping on us, you know, like, so like, I know I'm throwing the gratitude card at you, but like, let's be real. Like uh, you're only, cherry picking what you see in that other person that you wished you could be like, you don't know what 
life's like for them, even if they are super successful. Like there's, there's tons and tons of really successful people that are in a really dark place because they're not even, they don't have the courage to even speak up that they're in a dark place because they feel so guilty because life should be so good for them. They keep to themselves. That's why do you think so many successful people that seem to have it all commit suicide? Like, it, the money has nothing to do with it, like with what they're going through. So, you know, and, and as far as the problems, here's another strategy. The best way to solve a problem is to stop participating in it. If you are feeling miserable because you're looking at social media or the news or, you know, someone annoys you at the shopping center or it doesn't matter, don't be there. <laughs> you know, like as a young fella, I got told by a wise old guy, Joel, if you're at a party and the police show up, you've been there for two hours too long. <laughs> and nothing, ha- nothing good happens after midnight. And then he's right. If you, if you don't, if, the best way to avoid trouble is to not be there. Just like you've got two feet, a heartbeat, and a finite amount of years left in your life. You don't have to put up with other people's bullshit. And you don't even have to put up with your own. So just stop participating in your own BS as well. So guys, do a mastermind. It's one of the best things, the most powerful things that you've done. You don't have to uh, charge for it. You just have to find people that you admire and get them in. And you'll take more notes from what they say than what you did from reading the book, I can guarantee you, because I know I have. So Christine, there you go. I, th- I think we need to edit this and just cut out everything you said after <laughs> that awesome line about, you know, just don't, don't, if there's trouble, just don't be there. Like mic drop, honestly, guys, don't get caught up in the drama. You know, that's, that's what I'm taking away. And the mastermind has been very, very powerful. I love listening to people's different perspectives because it doesn't so much get, caught up and and mix like Chinese whispers. Anyone ever mm. remember playing Chinese whispers? Like the message gets so contorted by the time it gets to that last person. And we all interpret things in a different way. And what that mastermind's taught me is to be a better communicator, to be clearer, mm. you know, Joel, because people just interpret things totally different. They hear things differently. Even though we're reading the same book in the same chapter, People are getting so much, like so much more out of each chapter by sharing, you know, that's what I love about it. And we got to be really careful about our cognitive bias where the mind will like, look like we have beliefs and our brain will search for ways to make us right. So like, it's really like, like one of the challenges that I think I even shared it with you that my coach gave me was that go find people that you'd normally disagree with and go read their social media go read you know so like there's people out there that are believing that masks are good some people are believing that they're not well whatever side you sit on go read the other side you know politics like business like like even global warming like all the big issues like have the courage to go like because I, I i'm cool with you having beliefs i'm cool with you having beliefs like even diets like how many diets like i was only saying to someone yesterday like they were like talking to me and I was like, well, so I said, oh, is it just marketing? Like, uh, like the dirty seven or the dirty seven. Um, believe me guys, that is actually fruits and vegetables. It's not something else. So if you Google it and it's something else, that's <laughs> not, that's on you. All right. But it's like, it's vegetables that have chemicals on them. And, and, and someone like asked me, oh, is that just marketing? I said, well, you know, how, how is keto or the carnivore diet, right? And so I was vegan. Like it's marketing. Like obviously you're going to have beliefs around it. Like there's people that will swear blind you need to be vegan. There's people that are swearing blind that you need to be, you know. So I like to just take a third perspective view and like uh, work it out for myself. Take, take it in and work out what's best for you. And, you know, um, I know my grandma's at 90 plus years old. And none of this was around when she was doing it, <laughs> when she was living. So, you know, and she's a good 90 as well. So I know Christine that like, just have a, have the courage to like, see, like to take the blinders off sometimes, you know, like, and, and see what the other side's saying. Um, 
and just like you can like there's this new thing christine it's just out it's newer than clubhouse it's called you can see something on the internet and disagree with it and just move on without saying anything <laughs> <laughs> i think I, I think the world can do more of that do you reckon oh totally Totally. And you know what? One of my friends gave me one of the greatest lines. I heard it from her first and I've heard it since, but she said, you know what? It, it's not right. It's not wrong. It's just different. Mm. Like what makes something right? Just because we have been brought up that way with that belief or that story that's been handed down from generation to generation. If, if I was born into another family, I'd have totally different belief systems and values yeah. to what I have today. So yeah. it's not that it's right. It's not that it's wrong. It's just that it, it, it's different. People have, and that's okay. People are, are entitled to live differently, have different thoughts. Um, for me, I want my kids to experience different cultures, different religions, and then make their own mind up. I'm not yeah. there drilling in. The only thing we've drilled in pretty much is that they need to be an as an bomber supporter. <laughs> so, oh, goodness. But, <laughs> but if they were brought up in a different family, they'd be something else, you know? Exactly, exactly. You know what? Um, That's something we do with enthusiasm, though, is we, <laughs> we support those bombers. Do you know Lauren Lahav? Like, uh, she used to, like, got a Lauren story. Um, look her up on social media. She's awesome. Uh, she uh, been on stage with Tony Robbins, all the biggest of the big, um, powerful lady. And she used to run Life Wealth Mastery over in Fiji. And at, at that at the time, they used to have uh, like the the keto guy, the the carnivore guy, the vegan guy, the like the seventeen different diets would come in, <laughs> counting this, counting that, don't do this, all this sort of stuff, different exercise. So like, I always used to think like, like wouldn't that just be confusing? Like who was right? Like because I'm one of the people that I just want to know how to do it right, and then I'll go like both feet in i'll just go smash it a little bit I'll, i want to work out the best plan of attack and like it, it caused a lot of confusion there and like uh my my coach was actually there assisting and he says i was like it was really starting to get a little bit heated in there and they she got up on stage and they said um oh which one's right this happened this happened this happened and she's like which one's right keto or like 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 is, is the vegan diet like which one's right and she said which one's right compared to what? And that just shut them all down. Like, so what are you comparing it to? Cause nothing's big, small, right, wrong, good or bad until you compare it to something like, um, is the keto diet like healthy or unhealthy? Well, compared to what? Well, compared to eating McDonald's all the time. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, like what are you comparing it to? So like, and, and Hey, take a look in the mirror when you do this, like, are you, uh, good, bad, fat, skinny, like compared to what, you know, like I still like to look at with a bit of realism, uh, like Andy Priscilla said at Groot, if you, if you look at yourself in the mirror and you think you're fat, you're fat. <laughs> <laughs> He's just, sorry, sorry, that's bad body imaging. Don't cancel me, but you know, like you're cosmopolitan or something. I saw something on the, oh, anyway, that's a whole different podcast. Sometimes we've got to get real though. We've got to own it. You know, we've yeah. got to own it. We really do. But I, I love that that Lauren posed that question and she's such a badass, that woman. And you should follow her because she's amazing. I actually was on Clubhouse hosting a room with her today. So I got to hang out with her on there, which was pretty Kick cool. Kick ass. Um, it's, enough's enough, hey. Like, can't we yeah. just travel again? Like, coming <laughs> from a guy that never travelled, like, literally for, until about four years ago. And then now I've travelled to America multiple times a year, like, this time last year I was in America and I'm just like seeing all these, this stuff that we should be bugger this virtual zoom stuff. We need to be over there. Right. So yeah. Hope that hope they it's coming, it's coming, wake up themselves. So yeah. I know. What do you want to leave us with? Oh, what do I want to leave us with? Well, I, I don't know guys. I think, you know, it's how you show up to anything is how you show up to everything. So look at the areas of your life. If, if you've got shit relationships, how enthusiastically are you showing up in that relationship? And are you pointing the finger? Or are you taking some of the responsibility? If you don't have a great relationship with your kids, are you showing up as your best enthusiastic self? You know, are you having fun? Are you getting playful? If you're in your business, are you showing up with that enthusiasm, with that 
influence to be able to lead the troops within your business, you know, your followers. So enthusiasm, like I know we banged on about it in this podcast, but that's because it's so crucial. It's so crucial to your sales, to your marketing, to the way that your employees show up. Even if you don't have a business, but you work for somebody and you're a leader in that business, your enthusiasm makes a difference and it is going to have ripple effects. It's going to have such a much more positive, um, I suppose, influence on people than if you were just to show up with, um, you know, in that negative state all the time. So I, I love enthusiasm. I love, um, you know, applying it to all areas of my life. And, and Joel, I know that you do as well. We share very similar values, but that's probably what I wanted to end on. And um, I hope that our listeners got so much out of this podcast and that you will start to think about, well, how am I showing up on a daily basis in these areas? Yeah. Well, that was so amazing. Um, I, I, sometimes I just better off like just ending the podcast there. But uh, the thing I do want to give you guys is, is something practical, something that I know Christine does. She'll like uh, agree wholeheartedly with this. Um, and it's something that I've seen. I'm reading a book from Rich Roll, as you guys know, if you listened to the podcast last week, it's Finding Ultra. Uh, it's, it reflects exactly what I hear from Andy Priscilla and, basically every successful person that has control over their enthusiasm, which they'd have to, to get the success, right? Listen, there's a lot of places out there where you're not really free. You can't control a lot of things that are happening in your life. There's a lot of stuff happening. There's a lot of moving parts in the, on the planet right now. The one thing you can control in most cases right now is your ability to control what you're putting into your mind. So you could put more of this podcast and you could read the book that we're talking about. You could follow, uh, listen to the other podcasts, like get, get, stand guard, feed your mind with high quality information, not junk food. You can turn the news off. You can control how much water you drink and how little alcohol and like, you can control that. You can stop drinking alcohol and start drinking water. You can stop drinking uh, soda, I don't even know what it is, a soft drink, <laughs> soda pop, if you're listening in America, um, and you can drink water. You can drink green juices, you know, like you can control that. You can control that you can move your body. I don't care who you are. Like I saw recently at First Form, a guy who is representing him, like representing himself, but he's got no arms and legs and he's a professional bodybuilder. Like, are you serious? He's in there working out just like, I don't know, he's doing it. Like he's, like far out if he can do it we've got if you've got the ability to get off the lounge like you can move your body you know Uh, like there's all that stuff christine so it's like i'm not gonna like advertise the 75 hard but do something like you've got control over that it's not up to someone else it's you so if you want more enthusiasm in your life then you got to do that and i can tell you like i did not last night i was still awake at 5 a.m this morning (laughs) I did not sleep. I was pretty enthusiastic, right? And like, I might not have been like cartwheeling down to do my first 45 minutes. I'm damn glad I did though, because I've got this self-worth just building up. I'm doing things that build that. And you know, like I can get on this podcast and be enthusiastic no matter whether I've slept or not. And you know, we're not expecting you to be at Christine levels of the ability to do that now. Because I don't think Christine was born with this necessarily, but it's something that we've, that we've been able to build and it's just all part of showing up. So that's me. That's it. Have a most out seeing day. Share this with your friends and your family and people that need to see it. And yeah, leave a review. Have a most out seeing day. Damn.